safety for all safety is the need of the hour safety should be a way of life so safety is not meant only for certain people it is for everyone wherever whether you're at home whether you're in an office whether any establishment safety need to be practiced i would like to welcome our uh, a speaker for the day mr gopak kumar the international speaker to talk on the subject of today thank you and this is the first part i would also remind you that uh, while he was presenting please avoid posting question in the chat box there is a q and a box available down and i would request every participant to post a question only in q and a because we will not be able to record the question which comes on the chat and uh, kindly do not promote any product or uh, your uh, marketing on the chat box so please refrain in uh, uh, posting your you know, experience or contact numbers because this is by the nfe and it's nfe need to known uh, by everyone so we'll be going keep posting on the chat box more about our association and also about the kawa partnership and in the first part we will be coming back on the uh, 14th uh, uh, 14th of yeah 21st and the second part will be uh, taken up so over to gopak kumar welcome sir thank you very much uh, dominic uh, good morning to everybody and uh, happy new year 2023 today or this year uh, this is our first webinar of the year we are starting with one of the most important subject electrical uh, electricity and safety in hospitals as usual uh, this time we have more than uh, 350 participants uh, watching us online plus through uh, several social medias are uh, extra so without uh, spending much time let me start the presentation now for all your information uh, bureau of indian standards had uh, published the national electrical code i will go through the national electrical code uh, after some time so that you will be able to understand uh, now for all indian citizens uh, you can download the standard uh, uh, for free of cost from uh, the website you can purchase it at free of cost from website uh, it's uh, a 700 to 800 page document uh, which is one of the chapter uh, section 3 part 3 section 9 is talking about medical locations i explain how this is uh, uh, going to work now to the subject first is uh, we will have a small overview of the current scenario of electrical safety in hospitals uh, sometime if we read the newspapers uh, we get a feeling that uh, you know hospitals and accidents i'm just showing some of the examples of uh, the accidents the last two years people are dying it is there is no difference between uh, state to state it is happening all over the country you know this one amri hospital one of the biggest 89 people this is old 2011 otherwise if we look uh, so many accidents are happening and in media please understand that only the serious ones or where people lost life or you know very critical things are only reported this also means that uh, there are hundreds of accidents happening which is uh, uh, not a major one but uh, you know some small small burnings and uh, things like that so if we look at uh, the size of the hospitals uh, even starting from uh, clinics up to the largest ones uh, the uh, accidents are happening irrespective of whether it is a reputed hospital or less reputed hospital or so on this video we always uh, always used to show
So we have to make our hospitals free from such accidents. Uh, now, if we look at uh, the number of accidents or from the, the reported ones from the media, uh, Amaya made a good job. She was going through all the news and she was trying to find out uh, some of the uh, accidents. Uh, during 2004 to 2010, there were about 22 accidents. Out of that, you can find out uh, uh, you know, this is the global uh, reported uh, news and there were some reports as well and the maximum are in India. 2011 and 2012, out of uh, 29 accidents, uh, you can see majority are in India and sometimes if we look at the recent location of fire, air conditioners, it gives an impression that these air conditioners are meant to create uh, fire. So, so many uh, accidents due to uh, air conditioner and uh, now the uh, data from 2013 for six months uh, uh, again the majority of the accidents if we look globally we are having much more accident one of the data shows about uh, 58 or 60 percentage of the total number of accidents are happening in india uh, in comparison uh, you know out of 100 uh, uh, in the global scenario so our number of accidents are absolutely extremely high uh, now, uh, I would like to invite uh, our uh, speaker, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Amaya, for a short explanation about the medical uh, location, the, uh, uh, the different kind of equipment in the medical location and the type of accidents which is happening uh, on a daily basis so that or the improvements required so that you will be able to understand uh, a little bit more about the medical location. Over to you, Amaya. You have to share the screen. Yes, perfect. Okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone, and ha a very happy new year to all of you. So, I'll be talking about uh, how. Uh, electrical safety can be done in hospitals. So as you know, hospital can be said to be a hub of electrical installations, right? So, so many equipments are present and the number and the type of the equipment would depend upon the area where it is used or its function. So it can be a small patient monitor, which is used to monitor the vitals of a patient to an X-ray machine or a CT machine. So it can be a bigger machine also. So all of these, it requires an electrical connection to work, right? So that means the staff, patient, the doctors, or everyone in the vicinity of the machines or the electrical connection, they are in constant contact with an energized equipment or a conductor. So if it's not properly handled, it can be really dangerous or fatal to any or all of them in case an accident happens. So these dangerous situations, it, it can be, you know, it can be due to a sheer negligence. So, for example, it can be due to the plugging in of an equipment with a damaged connector or a frayed wire or the plugging in of an equipment or a connector without a third pin or the earthing pin. So, all of these will result in no earth situation. So, that means some shock can happen. Or generally, it can be due to unsafe medical practices by the staff or doctors or whoever is present in the hospital. Like uh, it can be uh, plugging in with wet hands or pulling the plug by the cord. It is seen in especially in ICUs in the hospital. You know, the plug would be at, at a distance and the nurses or staff, they'll pull the plug by the cord. And what happens then? A wear and tear happens. Or connecting multiple equipments to an extension cord. So remember, sometimes this extension box would also be locally made one, not a standard one or an, you know, not up to the standards which has to be used without the fuse and all. So what happens is that it is getting overloaded, right? So at that time, some short circuit or any arc, anything can happen. It is, you know, the probability of an electrical hazard to happen at that time, it is very high. Or it can be due to a, you know, a fault, connecting a faulty equipment. The faulty equipment can be connected to the electrical connection or it can be connected to a patient also. In both conditions, the patient safety 
is a problem. So what happens when uh, all these things are happening? So what is some electrical hazards, a common electrical hazards happen when all of these practices are done. The common ones are, number one is electric shock. Everybody will be familiar with that. Second one can be an electric short circuit. Then there can be an arc between the plug and the socket, or there can be a blast of an equipment. Or finally, it can lead to fire accidents and explosion in a particular area or all across the hospital. So the most common one is said to be an electric shock. So it's nothing but an unwanted response to the current by a human body. So when a patient or a staff is getting shocked, it will initially cause a tingling of nerves, you know? So then with time, it will start hitting the tissues. Then again, finally, it would cause the tissue damage and burn the tissue. So what happens is that it will actually lead to a burn or damage to the patient or a staff. So there are mainly two types of shocks in the medical location. So one is a macro shock and the second is a micro shock. So these two shocks are commonly found in medical location. Macro shock is the common type of shock where the current takes a path other than the heart. So relatively it is less dangerous to the patient. It is less dangerous. It doesn't mean that it is not dangerous. It is less dangerous because it can cause burns. The most dangerous one is the micro shock, which is in where uh, the current will directly pass through the heart. So when current directly pass through the heart means it will cause the heart to go into fibrillation mode. So fibrillation mode means the beating of the heart would be affected. And finally, it might lead to stopping the heart will stop to pump the blood and it can result in the death of the patient. And another common electrical hazard is electrical short circuit. So it can be very dangerous. So in a smaller level, it can cause an equipment failure or a blast. So it will be, you know, con constricted to a particular area only. But at a bigger level, it can, this can lead to a ignition of a fire or it can turn an area into fire, fire hazard. So the most common areas where the short circuits are found in a hospital, according to a survey is that number one is an air conditioning unit like the survey said, and wherever the air conditioning unit is there, the split AC is. The second thing is an X-ray room. Third thing is an incubator. Incubator short circuits are very dangerous because it is related to the neonates, the new bones. So it is very sensitive and it can result in the death of neonates also. Then comes pediatric ICUs. Remember all ICUs, there is dance for short circuit, but pediatric ICU, the sensitive equipment are much more. So that is why it is more mentioned in the list. Then the, it can be any ward, children's ward, dialysis ward, or just a pre-op or post-op ward. Then comes the OT. O operation theater also very small to very high end equipments are used. And multiple equipments would be connected at the same time uh, to a same source. So at that point of time also, short circuit to happen is very high. And then comes the biomedical storage unit where the repair, the repairs of the biomedical equipment, faulty equipment takes place. So during the repair also, there is a chance for short circuit and it can turn into other hazards. So these are some of the examples uh, of short circuit that turned into a fire accident in the hospitals of India. So all of these are mentioned in the news and you can see that in every hospital, that whole area has been turned into, you know, ashes. A lots of losses are there, lots of equipments, even patient death also has happened. And in the picture on the right, you can see it's a newborn unit. So death of babies have happened. So it is a very serious case actually. So it can happen anywhere, but all these areas are places where short circuits are more happening. So um, this is 
a statistic of electrical fire accidents in India. So from 2010 to 2019, there were 33 major fire accidents. That is major, the majorly reported fire accidents in India. And out of that, 17% were due to electrical problems. And in that electrical problems, the air conditioning unit, it was a main cause. And from 2020 to 2022, the COVID time, the number of death in fire accidents, it was about 122. 122 deaths had happened. So why fire happens, fire accidents occur in a hospital? So the answer is the presence of a fire triangle. So the hospital is having an ignition energy source, a fuel and an oxidizer. So the presence of all of these, it will result, it will turn a small short circuit into a bigger fire accident if not properly handled. In case, of, let's take an example of an OT. There is an equipment called a diathermy or a cautery machine. It is a very sensitive machine and most of the shocks, most of the shocks in an OT comes from that machine. It is used for this cutting or coagulation of tissues during a surgery. Or it can be a drill, which is used to cut the bones or drill, drill the bones, or it can be a laser equipment. It acts as an ignition source. Along with this OT is filled with alcohol prep solutions. There is surgical drapes, there is hand sanitizer, there is the presence of spirit. So the ignition source and this fuel when combined in a presence of an oxygen rich environment where this anesthesia machine or the ventilator machine is working, it will turn a small short circuit into a very big electrical accident like electrical fire. So in OT, that is the case. In case of other areas, it can be any equipment. A short circuit from a smaller equipment in presence of a, just a hand sanitizer, in presence of a ventilator, an oxygen rich environment, it can turn into a bigger electrical fire. So let's talk about some common electrical issues found on a daily basis in every hospital. So a staff or a biomedical engineer might be getting a shock from an equipment. So we would just think that is very normal and we might just ignore it. So what we have to think is that it is due to an earthing issue. We'll think it is normal because it is found everywhere and we'll ignore it, but it's we should not. That is not supposed to happen. That electrical equipment has to work properly without shocks to any of the staff or biomedical engineer. The next thing that we find is that we, we might find some insulation of the wire. It, it tends to be sticky or hot at some point of time. So what happens is that it might be due to an overcurrent issue. We should not ignore it. We should not just leave it less, just like that. We have to check the electrical connection there. The next thing is that uh, we might have noticed some constant failure of an equipment at a particular place or a particular area. Uh, or particular equipment may be showing some wrong readings in a particular area. Why that happens is that it might be due to multiple electrical issues. Sometimes we'll ignore it because when we connect it to a different place, it'll work properly. We should not ignore that, that previously that machine has shown some wrong values or it was not working properly. We have to check the machine as well as the electrical connections there. Then there, there would be some unwanted activities happening when an equipment is connected. Like maybe if we have connected an equipment, the lights would start blinking in an OT. Maybe if we connect a cautery machine, the lights would, the OT lights would blink. Or uh, some other equipment might, you know, show some blinking or a switch off. Or even in case of an ultrasound machine, some noise can be found. We'll think that it is due to earthing. It is actually, it is not supposed to happen because we are connecting a three pin cord to the plug socket, right? So if earthing is not proper, all of these things will happen. So all of these are electrical issues and we'll think that it is, you know, it is a common problem. We'll just uh, uh, look, we'll just ignore it or we'll uh, connect it to a different place and check. That is not the reason. It is an electrical issue. And uh, 
especially in case of an x-ray machine the common thing is that when we buy an x-ray machine the company people they'll uh, advise us to you know put a different or separate earthing other than the hospital earthing we are not supposed to do that if we do it there will be a potential difference actually between the earth of the x-ray machine and the hospital earthing so all of these things are some common problems that that are that can lead to a electrical hazard at some point in the future not at the, not right now it might lead into a electrical hazard at some point so the question is why electrical safety is a necessity in a hospital answer the reason number one the patient may not be in a condition to react normally to the effects of the hazards one the patient the type of the patient patient can be an unconscious patient the patient can be an unresponsive patient so it will depend upon whether we can we will be able to move the patient from one location to other if a hazard is happening we cannot wait for the hazard i mean we cannot wait for the hazard to you know go away to move the patient right we will have to move the patient then and there and if the patient is connected to too many life saving critical equipments means what again it will be very difficult to move the patients and if we are short staffed will be there will be no people to move and the condition also condition of the affected environment also will you know uh, for moving the patient it will be very difficult like how severe the hazard has affected the patient environment whether the equipment that is connected to the patient is malfunctioning or caught on fire or 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 is short circuiting so this is directly putting the patient in the harm's way so in that case if something is going wrong means the death of the patient is inevitable at that case so all of these has to be avoided so to avoid or to bring safety to the patient we'll have to provide electrical safe environment for the equipment for the patient for the staff whoever is working in the vicinity and the reason number 2 is that some electrical uh, medical equipments are in direct contact with critical organs bypassing the skin like using defibrillator we are connecting directly applying defibrillator to a patient so at that time if not properly charged means a burn can happen so using cautery machines we are actually cutting the tissue of the patients during a surgery so this is a very important machine and most of the shocks most of the shocks in an ot is from this machine it can be to a staff it can be to a patient so this one is very sensitive and this one has to be you know properly handled if no grounding is there means surely shock will be there and another one is an intra cardiac defib paddle so it is directly touching the heart so the patient is in direct contact with a equipment which is energized so the possibility if something is going wrong when the if an electrical anomaly is coming for all of these patient if when they are connected to all these machines if an electrical anomaly is coming it can lead to their you know harm harm to their lives their life is in danger so when a electrical or a energized conductor or an electrical equipment is in contact directly in contact with a human skin bypassing the skin so all of these are the psychological effects that can be present the patient can get burns and it will depend upon the type of the equipment and the intensity of the current they can get muscle cramps they won't be able to let go let go of that wire or whatever metal handle there you know uh, which is in their hand uh, live object that uh, they are holding they won't be able to let go and this can lead to a respiratory arrest which is nothing but they won't be able to breathe their lungs would stop breathing and which in which in turn will result into the fibrillation of the heart which results in irregular rhythm and that can cause a cardiac arrest or stop the heart from pumping the blood to a body so this is very dangerous so all of the equipments have to be properly handled and properly maintained then only we can ensure that patient is safe even from a smaller burn or which can lead to a death all of these will come 
under uh, the electrical hazard and we have to prevent all of these from happening in a hospital so all of these are examples of electrocautery burns that is during surgery due to some electrical anomaly some the uh, electrode which were placed on the bo uh, patient body has resulted in burns in most of the cases and all of these cases are from india and it all of them were a result i mean during the surgery all of these uh, all of these cases were during surgeries and it has resulted in burns and starting from a smaller burn to a third degree burn reason number 4 is electrical equipment it may be used for a support or to substitute a vital body function and if a breakdown happens during that time when the uh, exam uh, uh when the equipment is working or is being functioned it can cause a dangerous situation especially in case of dialysis or ventilator machine because dialysis machine the blood purification is done ventilator breathing is done what happens when both of these machines shut down when used on a patient the patient would i mean the, it will be harmful to the patient uh, it would result in patient death or patient being in a very serious condition unless they are not transported to another place or another machine so if it's one equipment is becoming faulty it is okay what happens when an area or a whole ward is becoming faulty in that case there is no other area to transport them so when a whole uh, dialysis ward is becoming some uh, electrical anomaly is happening in a whole dialysis ward there is no chance for transferring or transporting the patients at all so at that case the patients the life support of the patient is stopped so it can result in a very dangerous situation and it can result in death also and in india deaths have happened from electrical anomaly in dialysis ward and ventilators during a, a when the both of these machines were functioning Uh, due to some electrical short circuit both the machines stopped the patients who were on it were uh, you know put in a very serious condition and later on the patients they passed away so this is very dangerous situation and uh, it should be avoided because all of these patient uh, all of these uh, medical equipments they are in areas where special treatment has to be done like icu ccu micu nicu or it can be an operation theater or it can be a cath lab so all of these area they are rich in equipment with conductive metal parts and also during due to the presence of ventilators or anesthesia machines all of these or the gases it is very oxygen rich so a small short, short circuit can result or can turn into a bigger fire hazard so on top of that there is presence of alcohol and another flammable liquids like it may be a small sanitizer or it, there is presence of spirit everywhere in the hospital or especially in icu or ot or cath lab so uh, if something is happening or electrical anomaly is happening electrical fire is something that can happen so we should not actually uh, think that nothing has happened under now and it might not happen in the future also we have to prevent all of this from happening at any point of time not only now at any point of time for that for that we'll have to we'll have to mandatorily follow the hospital or medical uh, locations rules and regulations and electrical safety is very important and uh, because uh, patients and staff are put in direct danger if not properly maintained because they are always in contact with the medical equipment so the proper training and guidance should be given to the staff to properly work the machines and proper maintenance of the medical equipment has to be done every time so that no electrical hazard can happen and no patient or no staff is put in a danger where they cannot be rescued over to you sir that's a very good fantastic presentation uh, amaya you have to stop for sharing so that uh, i will share my presentation
Fantastic. Very good. Congratulations for the presentation. So now uh, we go to what can, what we can do or what we have to do. All of you are aware that uh, electrical equipment are classified with respect to safety. Electrical equipment are classified into class one, class two, and class three equipment. Class one is an equipment uh, which is having a body which is which can experience a shock voltage uh, if there is a, a fault internal. Uh, in a medical location, you can see here uh, we have listed out the class one medical equipment like. Uh, uh, hospital bed, bangers, uh, handheld surgical instruments, non-electric wheels, and so many class 1 electrical things are there. There are class 2 equipment as well. Uh, in a class 2 equipment, these devices are made in such a way that, uh, or in simple way, we can say that these are two-pin equipment with two-pin plug. So that means that there is no connection to earth practically required for this equipment, but uh, there are uh, you know limited application. The last one is class three equipment, which is called as SELV, PELV. SELV is used in medical location. These are for high risk areas. These are equipment operating with very low voltage. That means even in case of a fault, the voltage, the operating voltage is not enough to create a shock to a normal person. We should understand it, a normal person. Uh, in the sense, uh, for example, uh, in a normal condition, in a wet area, the shock voltage is something about 25 volt. Uh, in a class 3 equipment, it probably is working at a lesser voltage. So it may not be able to, this device may not create a shock directly to a doctor or a, uh, or a medical professional. But uh, for sure, it is a risk for the patient because for the patient, once when the skin is bypassed, even a very low voltage could create a problem. So like uh, uh, other electrical application, here also for medical, loca medical locations or medical environment, the class 1 and class 2, class 3 devices are used. They are classified. And the use of these devices are classified into three groups. Uh, three groups in the sense uh, the group 0, group 1, and group 2 medical location. Uh, group zero is a uh, medical location in a hospital where the equipment doesn't come in contact with the patient. Uh, that is the normal area, whereas uh, group one is an area where uh, part of the equipment comes in contact with patient externally or uh, internally, mostly uh, on the surface of the uh, body. Some uh, medical, biomedical equipment are sometimes connected or used for some kind of uh, checkings and so on. So in a group one location, disconnection shall be possible. That means even if the power supply disconnects, there is not a big danger. Uh, some of the examples are, you know, examination room, treatment room, and so on. We have a chart we will show you later. Then the most critical ones are the group two medical location, uh, where uh, medical equipment is in direct contact with uh, vital organs. Uh, that means the medical equipment or conductive fluids are bypassing the skin. It is in touch with sometime with the heart, even a very small voltage could be fatal. So with respect to criticality, these three are the, uh, the, the groups uh, uh, which is uh, mentioned or which is specified, group zero, group one, and group uh, two location. Now, in order to get uh, safety for medical location, it is not one subject, unfortunately. For example, if we if we take care of all the loose wires, if we take care of all the earth wires, if we take care of all the uh, uh, the, the the insulation failures, uh, even then, uh, uh, that is not actually sufficient for a medical location to have a good uh, electrical installation, a compliant free or a safe electrical installation. It consists of several subjects. So in NFE, what we are, uh, and another point is, it is not a subject which can be taught uh, like a, a two-hour session or four-hour, five-hour session. Uh, we educate people so that from next day onwards, they can work. It is not possible. We are planning to have a special course for the healthcare professionals. That means the uh, electrical or biomedical engineers working in the hospital and in biomedical environment. So we have identified uh, the areas, uh, for example, the subject one to be taught is uh, medical electrical equipment and system based on the ISO standards. I have some list I will show you. The number two subject is uh, 
the first subject medical electrical equipment there are so many type of equipment available with respect to safety each of these equipment is supposed to satisfy certain requirement so the 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 uh, the professional we will educate them the requirement safety requirement of each and every equipment based on the iso standards uh, because these equipment are made based on the iso standards uh, number two selection installation maintenance of medical equipment again uh, the second the first subject is about the equipment number two is uh, about its applicability Number three is uh, maintaining safe electrical installation as per the National Electrical Code of India. Uh, the NEC 2023 is published yesterday. Uh, there was an NEC 2011 as well, uh, but the upgraded version is having uh, some more uh, subjects. And then fourth, the repair and maintenance of medical electrical equipment. So, for example, the subject one uh, medical equipment, I'm just showing you the type of uh, uh, equipment on the right side and the reference standard. So our uh, training will include uh, uh, safety requirements or, or educating the biomedical engineer about the safety requirements of these uh, different uh, electrobiomedical equipment. Uh, uh, and for example, if we look at uh, the ventilator alone, there are several uh, kind of ventilators available. For example, critical care ventilator, ventilator uh, uh, for emergency medical service, uh, high frequency ventilators and so on. There are hundreds of, or hundreds of type of equipment are there and each of these equipment have to have its own safety measures inbuilt into it. It is uh, very much necessary for the medical uh, biomedical engineer to understand uh, the safety requirement of each and every equipment and uh, to work based on that. So our uh, class will be including this particular uh, subject. And uh, the second subject, maintenance of biomedical equipment, I just show you uh, from a standard so that you will be able to understand uh, what I am talking. For example, the standard, which is called as, uh, I'm sure you are able to see my uh, screen. Uh, Amaya, can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, I can hear it. I can see, I can see. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just showing one example, which is uh, IEC 62353, medical electrical equipment, a recurrent test and a test after repair of medical electrical equipment. This standard is explaining you the measures you should take care during a recurrent test means a kind of periodical test. You are using some equipment once in certain time, you are supposed to make some test. And uh, the second part is test after repair of medical equipment. I'm just showing some of the requirement. For example, test, the first test, of course, visual in, uh, verification, the actual test, for example, the clause number 5.3.1 measurements, 5.3.2, the first measurement is done at measuring of protective earth resistance, the most important subject for a medical class one medical equipment. Class one medical equipment have got a body, a metal body, which can experience a voltage, uh, which can be fatal. So now if we go through this particular uh, 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 I will just read out just for your in information. For class 1 medical equipment, it shall be demonstrated that the protective earth conductor connects all accessible conductive parts. Very simple to understand. There is a earth terminal on the equipment and this earth terminal must be connected to all exposed conductive parts of that particular uh, machine. That means the body or different kind of uh, exposed parts and uh, after repair, before you connect it to the service again, you are supposed uh, to take a measurement of the continuity resistance. Continuity resistance means you should find out the, 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 the connection is proper and it is strong. Measurement shall be performed using a measuring device able to deliver a current of at least 200 milliampere to 500 milliohm. The open circuit voltage shall be 24 volt. While low current tests up to 1 amperes are recommended, tests using up to 25 amps may be used. See, if you look at uh, uh, a, a continuity resistance meter of 1 ampere or 25 ampere, these are not uh, small multimeters. These are called as uh, 
you know uh, high current uh, micro ohmmeters micro ohmmeter means it can measure very very low resistance connections now note for low resistance values when a large cross sectional area and for shorter conductor length are used higher currents used for continuity test improve the repeatability of the test current however testing using higher currents might not detect earth continuity problems caused by oxidation or poor contacts so basically this particular standard this is one of the probably several standards this standard is explaining how to make a, a routine test of your biomedical equipment and after repair uh, what kind of tests the biomedical engineer should carry out before putting this uh, material or before putting this equipment into service for example here for medical electrical equipment i am reading the clause a for medical electrical equipment or an me system with a non detachable power supply code the resistance between the protective earth connector and the main plug and protective earth accessible conductive parts of the me equipment or me system shall not exceed 300 milli ohm so this is a requirement for one type of equipment similarly depending upon the type of equipment so many measurements are carried out and uh, uh, it is uh, it is very much mandatory that all these tests uh, must be done this is i am explaining a example of maintaining an equipment now let me go to the installation installation in the sense you have a building and you have a wiring starting from the transformer up to your uh, the uh, the last uh, socket and uh, device connected to the socket the installation shall be made based on the national electrical code of india now it is a legal requirement you must follow the uh, national electrical code of india now the method to understand the requirement of the electrical wiring for example i am just showing you part 1 of uh, the electrical installation part 1 is explaining about the requirement of a normal electrical installation that means uh, every electrical installation the part 1 of nec is applicable and this part 1 is about 380 pages and this part 1 talks about the methods to protect against electric shock fire uh, uh, thermal effect uh, then uh, over voltage and so on now and in the the group zero location and normal location you are supposed to follow the entire part one and in case of uh, biomedical equipment or in case of medical location uh, like a group uh, one or a group two location we are supposed to make additional safety measures and these additional safety measures are explained in the section nine of uh, the nb nec national electrical code this is part eight yeah this is the part nine please note that the requirement in part nine is uh, don't think that this is for the entire hospital no this is not for the entire hospital this is only for group to group one group two medical location so medical location means where a patient is treated and the, here so many requirements i just show you the requirement of uh, the earthing alone it is called as a supplementary equipotential bonding supplementary equipotential bonding means in a medical environment all the uh, metallic uh, objects in that area must be interconnected in such a way that you can see here supplementary equipotential bonding in medical location group one and group two supplementary equipotential bonding conductors shall be installed and connected to the equipotential bonding bar so what the standard says is you must interconnect everything together so that uh, within two equipment the resistance of the connection must be lesser than 100 milli ohm this is a technical requirement unfortunately uh, most of the biomedical equipment manufacturers are demanding for uh, the separate uh, earth connection i would say this is one of the biggest uh, safety hazard or this is one of the biggest problem in india so the course uh, for the biomedical e engineers which nfe is planning consists of all these uh, things and we are also sure that we can bring uh, international experts for uh, uh, training the indian engineers we are also trying to have a kind of an accredited uh, system which with which the engineer can be qualified 
So, about the rules and regulations, uh, we have uh, these are the codes and rules and regulations for uh, India. For example, IS732, and uh, the latest one is the National Electrical Code of India, SP30. Yesterday it is uh, launched. I have put as 2011. Sorry, I could not upgrade it, update it. It is 2023. The most important point which you should understand is the code and practices, the code and the standards are uh, uh, voluntary. And this voluntary document called as the National Electrical Code of India 2023, it becomes a mandatory rule if it is uh, written in a regulation. The regulation, electrical safety, the regulation is called as CEA, measures relating to safety and electric supply. Now, in the 2022 draft, most probably that uh, regulation will be coming out within uh, uh, a month. Regulation 38, provision for supply and use of electricity in multi-storied buildings more than 15 meters height. The owner or occupier of a multi-storied building shall ensure that electrical installation uh, and works inside the building are carried out and maintained in such a manner as to prevent danger due to shock and fire hazard and the installation is carried out in accordance with IS732 and National Electrical Code SP30. So now the rule, the regulation is saying that you must follow NEC for all the buildings more than 15 meters. Now the second para says provided that Hospitals and medical establishments shall have safety measures as per National Electrical Code, irrespective of height. This particular requirement in the safety regulation e ensure that uh, uh, every electrical installation is it must conform to the National Electrical Code of India. Violations, of course, is uh, very heavy. Uh, imprisonments and uh, uh, heavy penalties are there. Uh, now. One of the most uh, confusing subject in the hospital location, earthed and unearthed supply. For general location, a TNS supply must be carried out, which is called as an earthed supply. That means uh, the safety measure is protective equipotential bonding and automatic disconnection of supply. It is a measure. Uh, we will educate all these measures to the participants uh, of our biomedical course uh, in detail. Similarly, for group two location, unearthed system because continuity of supply is necessary. What is missing in almost all our electrical installations are uh, a measure called as protective equipotential bonding, what you are seeing in the picture. For example, sub-panel, motor body, some kind of uh, metallic uh, parts, metal pipe, all these things must be interconnected to a common bus bar. And this is called as earthing, unfortunately very rarely seen in our nation and that is the reason for uh, shock and uh, fire hazards. Uh, similarly, we will uh, educate the biomedical engineer about uh, the uh, requirement of inspection and testing. Inspection means there are not one parameter, there are so many parameters which need to be inspected and each parameter is governed by some clauses of uh, the National Electrical Code. And uh, finally, we are supposed to make a test. We will educate the biomedical engineer how he can carry out the test starting from uh, continuity up to the last. PAT stands for Portable Appliance Test. We will give you solutions. Uh, for example, one of the challenging uh, question which all biomedical engineers ask is, uh, neutral to earth voltage is 2 volt, 3 volt, 5 volt. If the voltage is more, the equipment vendor says, I will not connect my equipment because my equipment will be faulty. So such uh, uh, misunderstandings must be removed. And uh, the biomedical equipment, for example, for the special location, we need to go for additional safety measures with additional testing and additional verification. So basically, the course which we are planning will contain uh, not only it is not about one typical subject, uh, it contains everything starting with uh, the, the machine, how a machine is made, what are the safety concepts inbuilt into a machine, biomedical machine, then how you can select it, you can install it, you can maintain it and you can verify it. 
Then finally, the requirements of the electrical wiring in your building. All these things will be uh, carried out in the course. Uh, and some of the must have uh, safety measures are mentioned here. But anyway, we will discuss much more on our uh, second part of this program, which is coming on uh, 20th of this month. So with this, I would like to stop my presentation. We can have a question and answer session. But before ending, I would like to uh, uh, tell you that uh, uh, in IEC, International Electrotechnical Commission, where all these standards are made, the Technical Committee 64, uh, MT40, MT40 is the maintenance team 40. Uh, it's a group of experts. I am a member in MT40. This is the uh, global uh, uh, the, the team or the, the um, working group, which is making the standard uh, called as IEC 6036477110 requirement for special medical installations so all the uh, global standards uh, such as uh, uh, the the uh, american standard or the european standard or include for indian standard and the national electrical code of india medical location actually the origin the technical requirement starts from uh, or it is drafted or it is made by mt40 so we have uh, good connections with uh, global experts and I'm sure that we will be able to deliver a high quality uh, training program for the experts. With this, I would like to stop. Thank you very much. And over to you, Mr. Dominic.